Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, MCPC. Thank you. <coughs> Scripture reading will be taken from Mark chapter 8, verse 24 to uh, 36. Now it's the reading time. พระองค์ทรงทรงมองเรียกประชาชนกับเหล่าสาวกให้เข้ามาและตรัสแก่เขาว่าถ้าผู้ใดจะใคร่ตามเรามาให้ผู้นั้นเอาชาตัวเองและแบกรับการเข็นของตนแบกและตามเรามาเพราะว่าผู้ใดใคร่จะเอาชีวิตรอดผู้นั้นจะเสียชีวิตแต่ผู้ใดจะเสียชีวิตเพราะเห็นแก่เราและข่าวประเสริฐผู้นั้นจะได้ชีวิตรอดเพราะถ้าผู้ใดจะได้สิ่งของสิ้นทั้งโลกแต่ต้องสูญเสียชีวิตของตนผู้นั้นจะได้ประโยชน์อะไรต่อไปเป็นพระรมเทศนาของพ่อ Die to Self Next we have a sermon titled as Die to Self by Elder Seli Yen Tsai ขอบคุณครับ Good morning So before we start today I want to do something else uh, this morning, I saw uh, one of our members uh, walk in and with pain. Today, I'm sitting in the back and I saw the members of the group walk in and with pain. I want us to um, take a few seconds and just to pray out loud. Um, may God please put His hand on Lung Thuan. Let me ask you to take a few minutes and just to pray out loud. May God please put His hand on Lung Thuan. Let me ask you to take a few minutes and just to pray out loud. May God please put His hand on so we want us to pray together out loud, you know. So um, pray. Um, I think may God put um, His hand on um, Kun Thawan. Let's pray together. Prong Joka, Chao Ni, Kha Prong Lai, Khop Phung Prong Thi, Prong Song Nam Prong Lai, Mai Thi San Thi Yang Ni. But Kha Prong Lai, Ko Mi Jit Jai Thi, Ko Mong Lu Suk, Ben Huang, Sa Ma Chi Ko Nung Kong Rao, Kue. คุณลุงทวันขอพระองค์ทรงวางฝีพัดพระองค์ลงท่านด้วยในเช้าวันนี้และก็ต่อต่อไปและขอให้ท่านอยู่ในการดูแลรักษาของพระองค์ในพระนามสุขเจ้าอาเมนโอเค so the reading this morning is from Mark 8:34 to 36 I'll read to you in English I think it was up there. And calling to the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, the gospel will be saved. So, you know, every time I come up here, it's, um, it's like the first time and almost like the last time I still feel very shaky because this, is, this podium is is honored to be up here to serve the Lord um, just like um, a song earlier by Joe you know Lord if you call me um, I'll you know I'm there it's just just right on so leading to um, this sermon um, Pastor Peter asked me and you know I start preparing this sermon on Monday Tuesday Wednesday I finish Thursday, and as I get closer to Sunday, I, I you know, really felt that, that I know, Lord, I'm not ready. I need you. You know, I would never be ready, but I know that you will um, make me ready somehow. And this morning, Jessica asked me if I was going to talk about finance. I was like, no, but that's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I should, but you know, it seemed that it, it seemed like this finance thing that everybody liked, but nobody talked about it. I'm the only one openly talking about it. But then again, people might not get the message, so I said, "Well, we'll leave the finance thing until next time." So may you pray with me, please. Father God, may you remove all the distraction this morning. May your congregation hear your message and not mine. And may, may the word that come through me this morning be the word 
and the message that you want your people to hear. May your will be done this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what does it mean to take up your cross? What does it mean to deny oneself? What is your cross to bear? Why don't we close our eyes and reflect on what I will read to you again. So go ahead and close your eyes. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Go ahead and open your eyes. Does this mean anything to you at all? What is the cross that you're carrying? What is the cross that you must take up daily? Is it your spouse? Is it your job? Your school? Your co-worker? Or even your life situation? So in order to grasp the concept of carrying the cross, we must first understand the context of cross carrying in the biblical terms. This Jesus meant to tell you not to post on Facebook or social media during church. Is that your cross right now? Though that's what Jaden is doing right now. He's using the technology of Facebook to carry this service to those who can make it to church today. So thank you Facebook for allowing us to do a live. So we often associate Jesus' nails on the cross as crucifixion. Crucifixion was a brutal form of punishment that was common amongst the Romans. The Romans chose this for mode of punishment to put fear in everyone who would stand against the Rome and Romans law. Crucifixion was common in the first century Israel and this fact was well documented by Josephus. Roman would choose a popular place, typically a um, clear view on top of the mountain, to, many, to punish those who violate the Roman laws. Once condemned, the prisoner was whipped and he brought to nail to his cross beam, which he would carry publicly to the place of execution. Nail will be pounded to his hand and his feet he would be raised into an upright position, roughly 10 feet off the ground. Now that you know cross is purely for the purpose of public shaming and execution, what if Jesus asks you, walk the dead road daily and follow me? What do you think about that? Folks, carrying the cross is a one-way street. Once you walk up the hill with a Roman soldier behind you, it's not like you can decide, you change your mind, say, hey, I want to go home now. I don't want to die anymore. You think that's possible? There's just no way. It's been done. Once they whip you, put your, you on a cross, carry the cross up the hill, you're done. Theologian Wesley Gansford said this, cross bearing does not refer to some irritation in life. Rather, it involves the way of the cross. The picture is of a man already condemned, required to carry his cross on the way to the place of execution, as Jesus was required to do. As Jesus was required to do. Christ didn't ask us to do what he has not done before. We may face situation in life, but Christ has gotten it worse. Cross is not about self-promotion or self-affirmation. Person carrying the cross knew that they could not save themselves. Denying self is not the same as self-denial. We practice self-denial, yes? Yes, some must do. Self-denial is when, for a good reason, we occasionally give up some things or activities. But when we deny self, die to self, is when we surrender ourselves to Christ 
and determined to obey his will. Denying self mean to live as others center person. Jesus was the only person to do this perfectly. But we are to follow his step. This is following Jesus in the most simplest form. He carried the cross, walked down the dead road, and now must those who follow him. Now that we know a little bit about carrying the cross, and what it is and what it is not, let's go back to look at activities prior to Mark 34. If you have the Bible, please open to Mark 8, 27, please. If you have an app on your phone, go ahead and open up to Mark 8, 27. I will read for you. And Jesus went on his disciple, excuse me, went with his disciple to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist, others said Elijah, another one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he strictly charged them to tell no one about him. So let's camp here for a second. So Jesus was walking with his disciple, and he asked them who, what other thoughts of him, or who do they say that he is? Which leads to the next question. But who do you say that I am? What did Peter say? You are the Christ. And just he confessed that, that Jesus is who? Christ. Right. Remember that. He confessed that Jesus is Christ. Verse 31, he began to teach them that son of man must suffer many things and rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. And after three days raised again, and he said this plainly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. So what's going on here? You know, you're, you're standing to a person who is Christ, King, and Savior of the whole nation. You know, Peter be like, come on, Christ, come on, come here. You know, I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to educate you a little bit about something. Peter probably say like, easy there, Lord. You ain't going to die tomorrow. Not on my watch anyway. I'll be your soldier. I'll die before you. Wasn't Peter a soldier? Was, didn't he take a sword and cut somebody's ears off? Right? He would try to protect Christ, right? Is that what you would do? Hope so. <laughs> right? You know, he probably told Christ that Christ, you're Jesus, you're Christ who came to save the human race. What did Christ say? Let's look at verse 33. But turning and seeing his disciple, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are not setting your mind on the things of the Lord, the thing of God, but the things of man. Wow. How would you feel? The Lord said, get behind me, Satan. So Peter was used by Satan to rebuke Christ. Did he? He was, right? Though, you know, this is the providence that we may know that Christ's teaching via Peter's mistake. Again, a lot may not be perfect, but God's plans are always good and perfect. So if you were Peter, the moment before, Christ probably patted you in the back and said, you know, good and well done servant. You know, you confess that I'm Christ. And then the next moment, he called you a Satan. How would you feel? 
Do you feel good? No? But he just called you a good and faithful servant, and then he called you Satan. This is probably like a few minutes of each other. Would you be mad at Christ? You may. Or would you be sad? You'd be ashamed. All your 12, you know, all your 11 other friends probably look down and you say, dude, you got something. Fill in the blank. After all, you left your life behind to follow this man. And then he condemned you publicly. And we continue to see this pattern from Peter several times afterward, right? Is this you? One minute you claim that Jesus was the Lord of your life, and the next Satan is using you. Is that you? The concept of dying to self is found throughout the New Testament. It expresses the true essence of Christian life. We still have a book, a Bible in our hand. We're going to turn into a couple of books now, in which we take up our cross and follow Christ. Dying to self is a part of being born again. The old self dies, and the new self come to come to what? Come to life. John three, three to seven. Not only Christians are born again when we come to salvation, but we are continuing to die to self as a part of the process of sanctification. As such, dying to self is both one-time event and a lifelong process. Jesus spoke repeatedly to his disciples about taking up their cross. This is an instrument of death and following him. He made it clear that if anyone would follow him, they must deny themselves, which means giving up their life spiritually, symbolically, and even physically, if necessary. This, is, this was the prerequisite of being a follower of Christ, who proclaimed that trying to save an earthly life would be resulted of our losing life in the kingdom of God. If you look at Matthew 16, 24, 25, so both those who give up their life for his sake would find eternal life. Indeed, Jesus even went so far as to say those who are willing to sacrifice their life for him cannot be his disciple. The end time is near, folks. We can't just you know, procrastinate serving Christ anymore. Last week, the sermon told us about election. God chose you. What did Elder Somsak say? You are the chosen one. Did he not? And he talked about what? Your day being the last day on earth. If anyone knew how long he or she has left on this earth, would you please raise up your hand? As such, how do you know today is not your last day? Do not live life so you may regret, but live life that you may be refreshed in Christ every day. When we say to live right life is for Christ and to die is to gain, do you really wish it happened? Do you? I want to share with you with my personal experience of trusting the Lord about my son, Jaden again. Jaden has been operating his um, Facebook Live televising for the past four or five months. After the initial evaluation, I came to realize that maybe he could do it. 
He was 13 when he started. It's quite a bit of work to get this three session every Sunday morning to make it happen. You have to charge the battery on few equipment, make sure everything works before you come to church, and make sure everything works while you're at church. Am I expecting to be perfect? No. Am I expecting that he may make mistake? You bet I do. I pray to God that please God allow him to make mistake when we only have two viewers every Sunday. When we have more viewers, like 100,000, we won't make the same mistake again. You know, yes, may, I may make suggestion, but 90% of the time Jaden's doing it with God in control. I am at peace because I know it's not my Facebook post. It's all about the Lord. I will never be perfect. Jaden will never be perfect. But you know what, friends? God's plans are always perfect. Let me close with this. A lifelong service is a daily struggle to deny self. Will my doing today reflect God's glory? Remember that He doesn't need me to bring glory to Him. God is already good. God's already perfect. And He has all the glory. We are here to be the reflection of Christ's glory to everyone we come in contact with. You don't need to be Franklin Grahams to do Christ's ministry. You are the chosen one. God elect you to be you. What an honor it is to be you. God has chosen a sinner like me to be his servant. Every day is a ministry. A person you meet in a parking lot, grocery store, place of work, or even this church. Dying to self and carries cross is a daily and lifelong process. When we make our daily decision, a dose decision Christ center. When we do his ministry, do we do it for the glory of Christ or to make ourselves feel better? When we serve people here at church, is it to make oneself look good or is it Christ center? We must ask ourselves that when we pray to God, God, please make me more like Christ. Do we really mean it? Or we just want to say what God wants to hear? If we truly love God, we must ask the Holy Spirit daily to place Christ's interest first before ours. Your walk here from today onwards should be centered around Christ. If you don't remember anything, remember who you are. You are a nurse, a doctor, a teacher, janitor, mechanic, retiree, waiter, waitress, or whatever you may identify yourself to be. <laughs> you are a follower of Christ, and He has gracious, graciously allowed you to be those professions that I list above. So you are a follower of Christ, and He allowed you to be a doctor. You are a follower of Christ, and He allowed you to be a teacher. In my case, he allowed me to do tent making as an engineer. I'll be the best engineer for Christ so he, that he may receive all the glory. So may you pray with me. Father God, it is such an honor to be called your son and your daughter. May you remind us daily to die to ourselves and carry your cross daily. May you help us to place other need before us. May you help us to be Christ-centered in all our decisions, at home, at work, and in this church. And may you strengthen us daily. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.